Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up, the iPads are coming, the iPads are coming. <laughs> Ooh, plus, let's make some fun imagery, some photo tips for, I got to pronounce this right, iPadographers. Yeah, I'm, I made that up. Kind uh, of. iPadographers. There's iPadographers. Yeah, yeah, and the iOS 7 gripes, they just keep on coming. All of that and le vamp. It's actually pretty cute on iPad Today. iPad Today is brought to you by Slingbox. Buy a Slingbox and turn your mobile device into a television. With Slingbox, you can watch high-def TV on your smartphone, laptop, or iPad anywhere there's an internet connection. Learn more at slingbox.com slash twit. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, or online store. For a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code iPADtoday10. And by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 250,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash iPad today to receive a free power pack upgrade valued at $99. Hello, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Welcome to the center stage, where iPad Today is about to begin. It's actually already begun. It has Welcome. already begun. Wow. We're here. Hey, Leo. Hey, uh, Sarah Lane. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. I am great today. I'm happy to hear it. Fine fettle. <laughs> yeah, what's that mean? Because... Fettle? Fine fettle. I don't know what that means. I think it's a kind of thistle. Fennel? <laughs> Fine fettle. You've never heard no. anybody say they're in a fine fettle? No, that's just yet one new thing I've never heard people say. I think I just, I'm like your grandpa. Just face it. Yeah. And I'm saying things grandpa would say. Hey, Shara, are you in a, in a fine fettle? And I say things like, I... Thanks, grandpa. Yes. Just call me grandpa from now on. Okay. So I'm in a fine fettle because on Tuesday we have uh, the big announcement, and it's official now. The uh, invitations went out. That's right. It said... Uh, we have a lot more to cover. To cover. And a lot of people thought, well, this means they're going to release new covers for the iPad in color. You know, Tom Merritt made a joke about that, and that's... People actually thought that. Well, there's no way that that's what the announcement is. But I did see some uh, predictions of people on Twitter who care about things like this that maybe it has something to do with an actual official keyboard cover type thing. Renee Ritchie said... That would said, be cool. He, uh, he says this uh, on Mac Break Weekly. Uh, he's from iMore.com. And he says that what happens is the graphics designers at Apple make these invitations. And then they release them. And they get a nice uh, fine uh, glass of wine. And they sit and they watch the internets for the crazy, silly things that people make up about it. So it could just be they're getting, we have a lot more to cover. We covered iPhones last month, this month. We got more to cover. Or it could be my theory. Which is? I have a very elaborate theory based on this invitation alone. Is somebody, somebody building Some, something somebody's, back there? I don't know. They're <laughs> snapping something in the background. No really tell loudly. snapping children. As soon as the show started, they decided to just start. What is that? I, I don't know. What's, what's going on back there? What's, Lisa, stop stapling. Or just maybe close the door. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's, door she's angrily what, stapling what doors stuff. are for. Just close she's that door. angrily stapling. You have my stapler. That's because somebody stole her stapler. Somebody stole my stapler. Now she works in a closet. Continuing on with my my theory. Okay. So you, it, it, maybe we could show this invitation. You probably could find it uh, somewhere, Hippo. Um, it, it looks like, an, so there's the apple. We've got a lot more to cover. And then, you know, the little apple stem, that little um, thing? Yes. There's a bunch of them coming off. Now, my initial reaction, and, and each in a different color, my in initial reaction was, Oh, somebody shot the NBC peacock. There you go. And that's his tail feathers flying. 
I don't think that's what it is in, in hindsight. Uh, yeah. I think that that's okay. a pretty good distinction. My guess is, here's my total guess. I've been thinking about this a lot. Because right. one of the questions we have is, is will there be a Retina Mini? Something uh -huh. I want desperately. I say yes. I say no. Absolutely. I say Apple has decided it would either cost too much or that it would hit the battery too hard mm. or both. Yeah. And so they, they're going to do a regular mini and that mm. but they're hoping that the new form factor on the ipad and we're pretty sure we know that this will be thinner rounded corners yep. more like a mini will satisfy people who want a mini they'll get a retina big boy ipad and to assuage people who are disappointed about the the lack of retina on a mini what can you do to the mini uh, you know it's two processors behind it's basically an ipad 2 1024 by 768 mm -hmm. 7.9 inches what could you do to the mini that uh, wouldn't drive the cost up, that makes it maybe kind of like the iPhone 5C to the big boy iPad's 5S. You know what I'm saying? Color backs. Yep. I think you might be onto something. So I think that this is what, this is, I kind of think this is what they're gonna do. I, I, and this is completely based on nothing. We, we, we do think the iPad will be rounded corners, mm -hmm. thinner, the big one. I, I'm wondering, I really think they need to put a fingerprint reader on that guy because we're so used to it. I mean, have you been using it on the 5S? Oh, my you gosh. So, you it's, can't live without it's it. It's the thing I love most in yeah. life right now. Which because is, I'm so tired of logging in and entering the passcode. And and you know what I've been doing? They laugh at me over on the TNT set because I'll be, like, holding my thumb, like, what's up? It doesn't up? work anymore. Because I'm used to yes. it. Yes, so my point and exactly. And once you're used to it, you can't go back. So you th this is what I'm thinking. Ret uh, uh, Continued Retina 10.7, smaller form factors, smaller bezel, so it makes people with the, who like the smaller mini give them something to think about. Fingerprint reader, that's the high end. It's going to be the A7 chip. It's going to be A7X, whatever it is, all the new stuff. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the mini now is kind of the low price leader. We're going to keep it at 329 We're going to probably make it, uh, the instead of the uh, A5, which it is, make it the A6, make it only one processor behind. Uh, and give it color backs and make so it something for the kitties. It's the five C of iPads. That, I'm, uh, that's what you're this, thinking. It's completely. I'm just making this up out of whole cloth, but that's what I'm thinking. I say Retina Minis. I that's oh, I'd what love it. I that's what it that's what I'm going with. Somebody says more because RAM. I want it so badly. Somebody says more RAM. Do you even does the world at large even know how much RAM is an iPad? No. No. So more RAM? No, that's a non-starter. It doesn't. That, Apple's not going to all of a sudden say now with more RAM, people go, what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, better camera, maybe. I certainly see a lot of people. Sure. Yeah, we're using even going to talk. We're going to talk about a little bit more of iPadography so, later in the yeah, show. Yeah. So I think a better camera and both iPads wouldn't be uh, a miss. Yeah. I'm not, I still don't understand, and I think there is some strategy behind not having the best cameras in the iPad. I'm, I just don't know what it is. Um, keep the price down, probably. Right. Yeah. Well, there's and that. Uh, and I guess you could make it faster. And so that's why I'm thinking you put the iPhone 5S processor in the 10.7 inch. And you put last year's iPhone 5 processor in the Retina, uh, the Mini, rather. Anyway, that's just a thought. I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out Tuesday. It's going to be less than a week away. Yeah. Well, it Nine, is less than a week away. No, it is exactly less than one week it away. It is five days from Precisely today. Precisely less than a week when away. When we're recording the show live, of course. Uh, so Tuesday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. Uh, the event is at 10 a.m. We'll, we'll do our live coverage, our usual thing. I hope mm -hmm. you'll join us. we got a big... What do you mean you hope I'll join you? Well, I'm asking you now. This is, this is the same thing happened the other day where I said, am I doing this? And someone said, oh, if you, if you can, we'd love to have you. And I'm like, yeah, because I don't do, you know, the iPad beat or anything. It'd be kind of weird if... I guess it would be weird if you didn't join us. Well, I'm just sort of like, who, who is more qualified on this team? No just one. Just wondering. So please stop by. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't now, have to. Apple did but... not stream its last event because that was on the campus. Mm -hmm. But they did stream the last event that was at Mos at uh, Urba Buena Center, which is where this one is. So I'm thinking Apple will stream it. So if, if they do, we'll carry the stream live and then superimpose ourselves on top of it with our commentary. If not, we'll do our usual aggregation of all the people in the room. Yeah. Andy Anako did work. not get an, an invite. Oddly enough. That's weird. So he will be uh, joining us. Okay. Um, Good. It's going to be fun. Yeah. And I'm very excited. I love Apple events. Let's be honest. They're a lot of fun. And Everybody I'm, gets I, all I, excited I, and gets their coffee and we start getting fun. and. I've been saving up. I, I'm, I'm ready to buy whatever they sell. Yeah. Me too. I would love a Retina Mini. 
I would be really You happy. just don't think that we're going to see them. And I do because I think that they need to give a Retina Mini or the Mini is going to seem really long in the tooth. I agree. I feel like, I don't know, it's what I did as a kid. If there's something I really wanted, I would say it's not going to happen. And then that way I won't be disappointed. Aww. And if it does happen, I can be joyous. So you're either like, told you so, or you're super happy. Right. Aww. I win either way. You do. It's a win-win. You're either win. smart or you get what you want. I just feel like... Never both. Apple... It just doesn't feel like something Apple's going to do is update the uh, the mini. I don't know what Apple's going to do anymore. I used to be pretty good at predicting these yeah. things, and now I'm like, Pfft. You're very good at it. Well, thank you. Yeah. But not always. Oh. But thank you for saying so. Hey, we should talk about our theme for the day. For what the is week. our theme today? Well, I'm calling it Image Frenzy. Because it doesn't mean that the images themselves have to be frenzied. But it was just a way to try, try to make it sound exciting. But the idea is, is that we talk about photography apps all the a time. Lot. That's a very common theme for us. Because we love them. We love them. I love my photography apps. That's by and large, well, I don't know if I like my music folder or my photography folder better. They're probably neck and neck for different reasons. But I mean, I'm in my photo folder constantly. But I thought, well, there are other image type apps that are fun that don't necessarily ever make it into one of our photography roundups. So, one of uh, my new apps that I'm very into, because I am a childish person and I like to send animated GIFs to my friends, or GIFs, if you prefer to call them that, whatever, I'm not going to have that argument with you today. Oh, yes, you are. Well, I'm not. Is, um, this is an app called GIF Finder. It's completely free. Um, it's made by a guy named Matt Sheetham. Uh, he's in the UK. Uh, it, and I only say that because they spell favorite with an OU. But uh, if I go ahead and search for one of my favorite movies, Spring Breakers, now I've got a variety of animated <laughs> uh, GIFs from the movie. Now this is a, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit racy, so why don't you give me like a term of something I could look for? Yeah, not Spring Breakers. How about uh, cats? Well, that's... How I, about dogs? That's what How I, about flowers? How about race boring. cars? Race cars, okay. Race cars. So, oh, no gifts found. <laughs> People don't search for things. Uh, like that. One word. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or just race car, maybe. Yeah. No. No. Well, I love this app so far. No, it, it has really, to be something that's like... Uh, moves. Something that moves around. Pizza. Pizza? <laughs> yeah, you know? Okay. Pizza. Fine. Yeah, look. So now Holy you have cow. a variety of animated gifts that you can send to your friends. <laughs> Wayne's World. So that's one of them. Um, there's this is like a Zac Efron weird thing. I don't understand. So these are, you know what these are? Oh wow, these right. are useful um, when you're. Um, I don't. People like to use these like you're expressing an emotion. Yes. Like I'm. Ha I'm really having a rough day today, and then they'll use an animated gift. Well, to no, this illustrate would, this it. would be like I like I'm seizing the day. Look at that. Seize I just materialized a pizza and I ate it. Carpe pizza. So here's here's what happens. If I say I love this thing, I go ahead and you know I can favorite it and come back to it later, or I can say oh, I want to send this. Do I want to share the image or do, do I just want to share the link? If I go ahead and share the image, then it says, okay, well, how do you want to share it? Do awesome. you want to just save it to your camera roll? Do you actually want to uh, send it via a message to one of your friends or an email or that sort of thing? And really, you say, like, animated GIFs are, I mean, they're ridiculous. The whole point is that they're, for the most part, pretty ridiculous. But uh, they come in handy. I can hear Brian laughing right there because he has the same kind of humor that I do. Yeah. Look at this bubbling pizza. Mmm. 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 Look at that. That looks good. Well, I'm hungry. So this is uh, this is sort of the idea. If I want to search for one of my favorite uh, my favorite uh, uh, web personalities, Riff Raff, I can do so, and then I can find something that I really like of his, and then I can send that to all my friends. Wow. Yeah. So this is basically just, the, this is not the only app out there, but it was free and I thought it was done pretty clean and simply, called GIF Finder. I'm gonna show you and something that. that I just learned about and I don't have an example. So I think what I'm gonna do is order one and then next week I can show you what it looks like. Okay. Um, I, I uh, This isn't an, an app, but this is something you might wanna do with the pictures you have on your iPad or your iPhone. All right. It's called Fracture Me at FractureMe.com. And it prints the photos directly on glass. And the people I know who've done this say it is truly uh, gorgeous. It's fairly inexpensive. Um, I'll give you an example here. Let's take the classic, the most popular, $50. Size-wise, if I tap it, it's, well, you know, they, this is what I don't like about it. Every time you do that, you only get to see how big it is briefly. 
It says it's 10 by 14. That's pretty big. And it's printed on actual glass, and you could put it right on the wall, suitable for framing. Uh, you can either get it in wall or stand mount. Um, you pick your photo from your iPad right there on the website. Um, and they even have, if you don't have any good pictures, you can buy other people's pictures. I just think this is kind of kind of neat. Has anybody done this in our uh, chat room? I really like the idea of this. Printing on glass is kind of an unusual. You you print your Instagram photos a lot and stuff. I do. But I but think I've for hanging never, them on the wall. I've never I've even thought about this. Isn't this, this a is, neat so idea? So this is not an app. This is just a service. It's just a service. For photos that you might have on yeah. your bed. Yeah. Okay. So Fracture I don't know. FractureMe.com. Fracture they seem fairly affordable, and I, th you know, I've seen them, uh, not this company, but I've seen other pictures printed on glass, and they do kind of have a glow from within. It's really neat. So, um, just a thought. You were talking about image. Oh my gosh! No, I, this is I've never heard. When you of like that like on this. the wall, a I would love Look it. Look at that! Isn't that beautiful? And it's printed on the glass. It's not a. It's not on paper behind glass. It's on the glass. Isn't that neat? Yeah, it's very very cool. I love it. Seriously, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to think of. Would it look that different from a glossy image that's encased in glass once it's on your wall? I think it would, but I don't know. You know, because it's, it, you know, when you have an image behind glass, there's some, there's yeah. glass, there's a depth to it. It would look this different. Is, it would look different, I think, yeah. Well, and I'm going to get some of these and I'll, I'll show you uh, next week. Okay. I really? just think, yeah, because I'm looking f for ways to, I really want to print some of our What's travel nice pictures. What's nice about it, too, is that... It doesn't require like a mat and a frame. It's done. Because you just hang it the up. The glass is the photo. It's all that done. That I like because that's just a different style altogether. I'm thinking I want, I, you know, this happens to me every time we travel. I take pictures and I want to have them and remember them. And I and I was thinking maybe I'll print a book or whatever. Yeah. But it wouldn't be nice to have them on the wall. Yeah. I was yeah. actually um, pick I've, one or two I've been great researching pictures. Researching large format photo printers for this very reason because I'm like I, all I do is take pictures. And I want to look at them when well, I'm walking they, down a hallway. They will print really big ones, too. I mean, that they say the most popular, 50 bucks, it seems fair for 14 by 9. But they will do, for $125, they'll do 28 inches by 21 inches. Ooh, that's good. That's two, yeah. That's almost two feet long, by... As long as your image is of good enough quality. Well, and that's one of the things they talk about is how high res the image has to sure, be. Sure, sure. Um, and you could even get a little one that's the size of a Campbell's soup can. Let's be honest. <laughs> if you were going to print out something of that size and get it framed it'd be a lot more it'd than be more than 125 bucks that's ready yeah. to go hang that, on the wall that's awesome so i have to try to see how good their photo processing sure. is and all that a number of people i know have used it and like it and that's where i heard about it actually somebody recommended it on google plus so just thought i'd pass it along so I next week or however long it takes i'll bring some in and you can see what they look like cool love it yeah. i uh i've been playing around with an app called lens flare which is a lot like it sounds. The J.J. Abrams app. Well, it's not a J.J. Abrams app exactly, but yes, that is that is what you uh, get from it. If I, um, but it was, it was actually that and more. So this is uh, an image that I've been playing around with. Like, okay, so this particular image, uh, again, is from this movie that I really like. And I added a little sun flare there that didn't actually exist. So if I go ahead and say, okay, well, let's add something that's, oh, that's a little fun. bit a little bit crazier right oh, that's like fun. yeah like what about an anamorphic lens go ahead and add that come on now my ipad has been super slow because i'm trying to download like 175 apps at a time um all right so i can sort of like move around like you know i think the sun actually looks kind of cooler here you get a little get a little something something let's kind of put it like at an angle there like, ooh, okay. And then, at that point, and by the way, you can work with multiple layers, which I kind of stay away from because layers never make that much sense to me. But then, once I've got the flare that I'm looking for, you can bring down the brightness a little bit. So honestly, you can make it like totally crazy, or you can make it look subtle and actually like it's supposed to be there. Of course, you can screw around the scale um, and artifacts. Then filters are basically just photo filters. So you can add filters to this to make it I don't know, look like what you want it to look like, get it really dramatic, that sort of thing. And then of course you've got textures as well. You can sort of dust up the photo, add some you know, sort of silly spots and that sort of thing. So the idea is it's really, it's not just like a, oh, this is a, a photo filter app, like something that you, you know, put on Instagram or whatever, change the opacity here. It's specifically around lens flares themselves. Um, and they're fun and I like them very much. So that's something that you may not have heard of before. Never have. And, now, and it's not, it's a specialty. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, it's, for the most part, it's probably not going to look like 
that the flare was actually part of the original photo. It's a, oh, it's, it's not that it's good. It's a stylist. No, no, no. I mean, the, I think the point is, is that it's a stylistic thing. We're right. not necessarily trying to right. recreate the the actual sun in the sky. But you could, if you wanted to just kind of tone it down and give your photo a little something, something, which helps a little bit with, with, uh, uh, with scale and sometimes can draw the eye to certain areas. But... I like it a lot. Uh, this is a uh, one ninety nine dollar ninety nine uh, from BrainFeverMedia.com. They've got a few other apps as well, but Lens Flare. So it's Lens Flare with some other fun stuff as well. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I was just playing with something. <laughs> we mentioned this app before. You were talking about animated gifts. Uh, we've mentioned this app before. It's called Echograph. It lets you make animated. Uh, actually, I don't know why it's upside down, but it is animated GIFs out of... So you take uh, a video... Oh, my God. I was you, like, why am I not talking? You only animate uh, part of the video. This is done very roughly just now uh, while you're doing it. So I animated just your hand. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, I didn't hold it steady, so you see why the chair is kind of fragmenting. Uh, the twit pillows are moving with me Yeah, that's probably not a good look. Sure. But I, I could show you. Let's... let's <laughs> Giving us instructions upside down. This yeah, I don't, I don't know why. So this is odd. called Echograph. Echograph. And it's, uh, we sh I think I've showed this before, but it really is cool. So it's really meant for it. And the key oh, with yeah, this yeah, yeah. is I to hold this. a still, hold it still, and then say, oh, I want to just animate. Remember, we showed this one. I just want to animate a little bit of, of the picture, right? Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, you should, you can, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. I don't. I don't know what's going to happen when this starts to animate. I guess this. Well, it's, it's somebody moving, but that doesn't seem that weird. This. I think you'd have great fun with your cats. Uh, you see, the t just the tail is moving. Right. Yeah, very subtle. That's a subtle example. And that's what? That's the Bellagio pool. Yeah. That's yeah, that's weird. the fountains, right? These yeah. are actually users. So one of the things oh, Echograph cool. allows you to do is, if you've got something you like, upload it. I just. I think this is fun. Me too. And Echograph is not the only app that does There's this. Number. There's number. Cinemagram is another one. Cinemagram. Very popular and, and one. And there was Vidi or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Vidi just came out recently and added this. And everybody said, well, and, but what about Echogram or uh, Echo, Echograph. Echograph? Yeah. So uh, this is cool. This is cool. It's cool. It's 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 one of those things where it's like, then what do you... Where, where, then you add where a lens you, flare. Where do you put it, though? The next thing... Well, you, you put... Now, okay, then you add lens flare and you put it on glass. Well, but it's and not you a can take photo, it home. right? It's actually a... No, you have to put this online. And uh, you can output it, of course, as a video. Uh, but you could also output it as an animated GIF. And that's probably what you would most likely do. So uh, that's think the, of it as yeah. an animated GIF maker, right? Well, then you could find it on GIF Finder. Yes. If you're done with Spring Breakers GIFs, then you can have beautiful waterfalls where only part of yeah. the... It's, it's cool. It's, it's very artistic. I love the way that they look. I just wish that there was more of a reason to make them. For There's me, no anyway. reason. I've had this app for <laughs> years, and I've never done it. I mean. So uh, the last app that I want to talk about, and this is... Uh, it's kind of weird, actually, that... We haven't talked about it more often on this show. There you go. Is Aviary, which is one Love of my Aviary. favorite Love photo apps. Aviary. And it's actually gotten quite a bit better. Um, now, I didn't know it was an app because this has been a website. This is a thing yo, that yeah. you'd be able to do on uh, on websites. I talked about the photo app on i5 over a year ago. Okay, all right. But it's, uh, it's an iPad app as well. And one of the things that I like, I mean, we could talk about all the, you know, the nice ways that you can make photos better. But one of the things I like the most is, okay, so let's use a picture of Sammy with his tongue open, super cute, is you can make memes. So you've got all these photo filter options. You can adjust the brightness and focus and, 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 and sharpen the image and, and draw stuff. It. But way over here at the end, You've got a little, it's, it kind of looks like a kitty head. It says meme. So you say, oh, how about that? So a top text is like, I'd oh, say. Oh, I can has. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. All right. And then bottom text. People still do that? Yes, Leo. People still do this. <laughs> Something like that. My tongue, oh, hi. My tongue is here. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then you say apply. And then it's and then it's, it's like, do you want to do other stuff? And I say, nah, it's fine. And then that's the end of it. It goes to my camera roll. And of course, if I want to send it to Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, order prints, or just email the photo, I can do that all from the same screen. I think you should get that printed on glass. Easy as pie. Well, no, I look bad. <laughs> if I didn't have two chins, I totally would because Sammy's really cute in that photo. 
Yes, he is. Oh, hi, my tongue is here. See how easy that was? Yeah, oh, hi. So aviary can give you, it's like a little meme maker. It's a lolcat. It's more than I that, think. though. I mean, it's a full, oh, it's oh, full oh, photo totally. editing. It's an incredible app. Oh, yeah. you, can, you can go completely Who bought that? Was it Google? Who bought that? Somebody uh, bought that. No, because Google bought uh, Snapseed. Right. Who owns Aviary now? Why am I not remembering? They used that? to. They were a standalone thing. The whole thing was it was HTML5 yeah. uh, photo editing, uh, and I just somebody per purchased them and built it into their system. I Might know. Maybe it was Flickr. No. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't. Anyway. I don't know. I don't know why I'm. I'm. It's. Seems, uh, too bad there's nowhere me. you could look to find something. Too like bad that. there's just no information like that online. <sighs> so yeah, you can. You can to uh, to the adjust the brightness and and contrast and it. This is a great app. It's. I don't want to say it's the best one for the iPad because Snapseed and... That's awesome, too. But you, they, you, they're all free. You should just have them, right? You should just have them. Yeah. In fact, sometimes I just go through phases where I'm like, oh, I just use Aviary. And you know, somebody will look over my shoulder and be like, no, what do you like best about Aviary? And it's like, eh, I, I don't know. I'm just using it for a while. It's kind of nice to change it up every once in a right. while and, and, and have different filters. Very happy with my, with my little... Uh, my law meme that I made on nice. Aviary. That is, Aviary is the only uh, one that has such an easy meme maker of all the photo apps that I have on my iPad. And I have a lot of them. I think you probably So we talked about quite a bit. We talked about GIF, GIFs. Everybody, I, I don't want to get any emails about GIF. that. That's just tomato, yep. tomato. Everybody's happy. Talked about Fracture Me, Lens Flare, Echograph, and Aviary. All sorts of good stuff that you can uh, do with photos that you already have lying around, make them more fun, animate them up, um, okay. add text, share with people, anything in between. If you want links to all of those apps that we mentioned and you're like, oh gosh, I forgot the like third thing that Leo talked about, you can always just go to twit.tv slash IPT. That is our show information database. It's more fun than that, though. It's But that's where all of our episodes live. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Every show has show notes, links to everything we talk about. You can uh, all obviously go there if you missed an episode and think, wait a second, I didn't watch episode 167. You can go back and look with at the Chad. episode with Chad. That was 168, actually. Yay. And we had a really good time that day. And of course, if you don't join us live, we're not going to be on Thursday that much longer, but we are till the end of the year. Um, Maybe we don't even talk about the new schedule until we get later on in we're the We're going to be on Mondays starting J uh, January 6th. Yeah, we're going to be on Mondays. And it's At 11 a.m. Pacific. It's, it's going to be awesome. You're going 1800 like, UTC. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to start off your day. It will be my first show of the right. week. So, so that's, I'll be fresh. I, yeah. As it is today, it's the last show of the week. For so you. I'm stale. So you're tired. And Usually I'm pretty high by the time I get here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's By the way, I just looked up. Aviary was not acquired. Google did use them uh, as their photo editor until they bought did Snapstream. It, did it, did it, it, Snapseed? Seen. Did, did Aviary acquire somebody else then? Because oh. it, I, I know Does that exactly. ring a bell, what you're saying, what I'm saying? It, it, yes, yeah. but I don't, obviously. No, they're still a standalone company. Hmm. Very good know. company. I don't know what the answer is. Um. Uh, anyway, uh, until the end of the year, we're on Thursdays live at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, and Leo's usually pretty high, so if you can join us live, that's awesome. If not, we're on demand. Audio, video feeds, it's easy. Everywhere. Just do, just do whatever you want. It's We're not... We're not going to... We, we are changing the schedule a little bit at the beginning you. of the year to uh, realign stuff, and you can find the information on that at our blog, inside.twit.tv. We have the whole new grid. Nothing to worry about until uh, next year. Yeah. Our show today brought to you by Slingbox. This is the thing. Sling's the thing that turns your iPad into what it was always meant to be, a personal television set. You can use the iPad, the iPhone, an Android device, your computer, to watch your home TV system anywhere on the Internet. That's what Slingbox does. Go out, get the sleek Slingbox 500. Beautiful design. It's got built-in Wi-Fi. There it is right there in the front there. It's got HDMI connectivity. It's full HD 1080p. And the Slingbox 500... The Slingbox 500, thank you. <laughs> Also lets you archive videos and photos from your device with SlingSync, which is great. It means you can send home the photos and watch them at home. Slingbox is so awesome. Uh, you know, we've got the World Series is coming. Super Bowl will be in January. And you might be somewhere where you can't watch those games. But if you can get them on your home theater system and your home TV, you can watch it anywhere on your iPad with the great Sling app. Uh, it just is really great. Idea. Password protected, of course, so nobody else is watching your TV set. You can control your DVR. You can uh, record shows, playback shows. 
It's also not just for travel. I mean, it means that with your iPad and your Slingbox, you can watch shows, your favorite shows in your backyard, your garage. You could, of course, watch it next time you're at DMV just to watch TV instead of uh, stewing away as you wait in line. No special programming packages necessary. You're using, you already paid for your cable, right? Or your satellite bill. Yeah. Yeah. So you got it. Slingbox is at Best Buy or Amazon or check it out at slingbox.com slash to get more out of your TV with Slingbox. Really is great on an iPad. Love you, Slingbox. Love you. Love ya. Hey, so <laughs> did you see the tweet that uh, T-Mobile CEO John Legere sent out? Uh, was about, it about the iPad? And it they're going to get the iPad, aren't they? Well, he didn't say that. His tweet said, what has two thumbs and is excited for October 22nd? Hashtag this guy, <laughs> which is pretty a dumb funny. joke, okay. Well, it's a funny joke because it's so dumb. It's so dumb. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a this guy fan. It's gone full circle. Right. It was annoying now it's, back in 1989 it when it first started. You do it because you want to be... Now it's ironic. Stupid. Right. It's an ironic, funny... Thing. Right. YOLO will get there eventually as well, but we're not Yolo, quite there yet. YOLO is just, YOLO is kind of, right. it's peaked. Yeah. Anyway. At, but anyway, John Legere, no, funny, good, that's nice. He's a CEO. Usually But there's yeah. there's no reason to tweet that unless the iPad was coming to T-Mobile, which right. should make some people happy. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to switch over to T-Mobile. Well, right now you can get an iPad on AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint. Mm -hmm. T-Mobile's the only major U.S. carrier that Correct. doesn't sell 3G-enabled iPads. One of the reasons it, you know, there wasn't a lot of demand is because T-Mobile doesn't have a vast LTE network. They're still mostly 3G. Yeah. They're rolling it out, though, and I think probably Apple was saying to them, hey, when you get to a certain size, we'll make an iPad for you, too. Uh, the other good thing about that is, of course, T-Mobile's data rates are lower in many cases. They still offer unlimited plans. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's actually a good choice. If you have good T-Mobile coverage exactly. where you are, it's a great choice. And, and I know some people say, I love T-Mobile. I've always had good experience with them. Customer service is great. Coverage is awesome. And other people say coverage is not awesome. So Just, It really depends where you are. It totally There's does. one other selling point. If you travel internationally and you want to bring your iPad with you, starting later this month, Maybe they'll announce it concurrently. I don't know. T-Mobile is going to offer free international roaming uh, data plans. It won't be 3G or LTE. It'll be Edge only, which is the slower one. Hey, but at least you'll have, you know, you pay a lot of money for data internationally mm -hmm. if you're a U.S. Uh, user and you travel. So this T-Mobile is owned by uh, Deutsche Telekom, the German telecom company. It makes perfect sense. They, they have deals already because of the changed laws in the European Union. It makes perfect sense. They're going to give you free data. So now if you travel a lot and you want to bring an iPad with you, T-Mobile is actually a pretty compelling uh, a choice, I think. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You know, just one little question about Slingbox. As yeah. somebody said, does the Slingbox support OTA programming? Well, it doesn't support it in the way that you think, but yeah. Of course. Because it's part of your cable package. Can you watch uh, whatever you can Network watch at home, television. you yeah. can watch in your Slingbox. Right. So, yes. So, if you're watching. It's like Aereo in a way. You know, that's what everybody's talking about, Aereo, this Barry yeah. Diller thing that's now spreading. Uh, right. It was in New York and Boston. The idea is that you rent a little teeny weeny antenna that's on a roof somewhere in New York City, and then you can watch any television programming that's coming through that aereo antenna, uh, and you can watch it on your iPad. That's a cool idea as you travel around. But if you have a Slingbox, you don't need aereo because you and you don't need to pay the aereo fees. It's right. a monthly fee exactly. because you already have all that capability. Yeah. Yeah. So, have you heard of oyster books? Oyster boats. Books. Like, are they books made out of oysters? No. <laughs> Oyster that book. would be cool, though. Yeah. But no, Oyster Books is an ebook subscription startup. So it's very much like a Netflix for books. It has recently come to the iPad uh, as you know, as an interface. Once you sign up, it's ten dollars a month, which oh, is exactly exactly what I pay RDO for us uh, a music subscription. And it's unlimited. And anything, it's unlimited. Yeah, anything that they have. But ten what bucks. do they have? They've got a lot. Do of they have books. everything? Well, I mean, they've got. They've got a pretty big library. Let's uh, let's open up the app here, and I'll I'll show you what. Uh, I don't really like their logo, but everything else about the app is actually Ooh, quite nice. Oh, I really nice. don't like the logo. I, isn't it? it kind it's of an oyster like, with a pearl. It's a little in it, gross. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All so right. here we go. We've got um, political satire. We've got you know food stuff. 
We've got shorter stories, end of summer, pops, things that are popular on Oyster. You may have heard of Water for Elephants. That's That's been around a while. Life of Pi. Predictably Irrational. That's a great book. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. Wheat Belly. I guess you're not supposed to eat Don't eat wheat. Freaking bagels Cryptonomicon, anymore. my all-time favorite book of all time. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. All-time favorite book of all time? Yeah, that's a long book, too. So you could, you know, I, that's awesome. So 10 bucks a month. Yeah. You now get little, You get a little synopsis of what's going on here. How is, many pages? Is the reader on uh, the iPad pretty good? What do you mean? Is it pretty good? Like the app. I mean, is it easy to read? Uh, the Kindle app's pretty good on the iPad. I think so. So is it kind of like that? Uh, yeah. Did you get a book? Yeah. Are you a member? Well, I'm, well uh, yeah, I'm a member. Oh, yeah, it looks just like the Kindle. The reason that I'm a member, um, and all of you could just become members within the next two seconds, is um, because you do get a free month. And it's the sort of thing that you really have to think about because right. at the end of the month you will get charged because you have to put your credit card in right. in order to get access to anything. But, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it looks like a book. Works nicely. That is cool. Yeah, you get your little, you get your little so stuff. It's like right? RDO. It's ten bucks a month, and and any yeah. book in their library. I mean, the first thing you'd want to do is see if they have everything. You know, all the books, the kinds of books you would sure. like. Sure, like read. like give me give me a book. Let's search for um, something. Okay, the hot the hot new book, Dan Brown's Inferno. Okay. You know, he's the guy who did the uh, yeah the Vinci Code. Of course, yeah. That's a hot book. Uh. Zane's Inferno, Return from the Inferno, Silk and yeah, Inferno, Out of the Inferno, Beauty in the Inferno. Because that's a bestseller. Let's see. Do they have? Uh, well, who else do we? Uh, who else do we like? Margaret Atwood. Oh yeah, she's yeah, great. She's great. You know, she was. Um, yes. A guest on the Social Hour. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. She's uh, Canadian, I guess. Uh, Amber knows everybody in Canada. Well. She, there you go. You know. They do have Margaret, uh, some Margaret Atwood. Yeah. Bluebird's yeah. Egg, Handmaid's Tale, yeah. Door. Oh, well, there you go. All right. Uh, pretty much, you know, I mean, quite Let's see quite, if they have uh, my favorite science fiction author, Peter F. Hamilton. This is what you guys should do before you, I guess a free month, why not? You'll get a chance to see it all. That's the thing is yeah. that, it, I mean, it completely, yeah, nope. No results there. Okay. Inle unless I explode. So it as I would expect, it's, uh, you know, it's a little spotty. It's not everything. Here. The, I, I really do liken it to a Netflix because it's like Netflix doesn't have everything right. either. Right, very similar. But is it worth $10 a month for me? The if answer is yes. a lot of the books you want, yeah. sure. In fact, Netflix is only $8 a month, right? Yep. But yeah, it's the same idea. Um, and you've well, got... You'd, if you read a book a month, you'd spend ten more than 10 bucks. So exactly. That's nothing. And if you want to go um, young adult, for example, then you go into that little... Uh, Boy, I can remember going to the bookstore with Abby, and she's comes home with $100 and an armful of books. They'll give anybody a book And then goes through them in a days. week Lauren or two. Lauren Conrad has a book. Who's that? It's all about... Listen to the synopsis. Los Angeles is all about the sweet life. Hot clubs, cute guys, designer everything. Who's oh. Lauren Conrad? She was on the hills. Oh, so she's an actress. Well, I don't know if you'd go that far. Vampire Diaries. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. No, so I. So they have I, young adult. They have, this is neat. Yeah. I think this is a great, great. You know, it's a subscription model um, that doesn't work for everybody. They, they, they kind of bank on the fact that a lot of people will have a subscription and then they won't read that many books and then you know they're still getting ten dollars a month from you. But yeah, if you, you know how you are with Audible. I mean, it's if you're an avid reader, oh, yeah. go for it. You go through, and it's probably dependent on the publisher because I, you know, I can see how publishers might go. Hmm, I don't know. Should we do this? Yes. That's so exactly it's probably right. dependent on which publisher. How you wouldn't find certain music on subscription yeah, or sites. certain movies on Netflix, just exactly. like you say. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, that's Oyster. It's nine ninety five per month. Uh, the app, of course, is free. That's not. But 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 know that if you download the app and and don't have a subscription, you can't do anything. It won't get you anywhere. That's the iPhone. Uh, Show the iPad Brian. one, uh, Brian. There, if you, if you click if you the click tab. On, go down. Uh, uh, right down. to the right of screenshot. I don't think he over, knows about this. Up, there, there you go. go. That's a duh tip. Yeah, it is. Yeah. When you're when you're looking around in the uh, app store, you want to look at the iPad view. Okay. Right. Well, he learned something new. So do we? And the iPhone 29 245 is saying no, it's not great. The public library, hello people, but the public library, while they do have every book, but you have to take out a physical book, and they do have some e-books, but not all of them, and they have a fairly draconian, usually Windows-based copy protection scheme that I find annoying, and certainly not iPad compatible. So this may well, be a better choice. The the person who said the public library, hello people, it's like well. 
I think reading is the goal, right? Right. It's nice to have options. Maybe you're like, this is perfect. Right. Right. I want to read on my iPad. $10 a month seems like a right. good call for the four books that I'll be able to get through yeah. if you read a lot. It's like saying, you go to a bookstore, public library, hello, Sarah. Hello, whatever. <laughs> snap, 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 snap. Why aren't you at the library? <laughs> at my library, people shower there, so yeah. I don't really like nice, going there. It's a that nice much. place for bathing. <laughs> Not so much for reading. It's actually quite a nice library, but they'll let anybody San in Francisco there. San Francisco Public Library is beautiful. They it's, have to let anybody in there. It's a public library. Yeah, but people do go in there to like to bathe. To bathe I themselves. Know. And sometimes I think, you know, an iPad on my couch sounds pretty good. Yeah. So, do we want to talk about the exclusive photos that the San Jose Mercury News got of Apple's new crazy campus? Uh, they got inside pictures. Well, they're pictures of the models. That's because they got uh, Apple just got approval for the Circle Campus. That's correct. Yeah. This thing is happening. Unanimous approval, I might add. It looks kind of cool. Oh, so this is a model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't the actual <laughs> campus. <laughs> the campus isn't built yet. <laughs> the campus has got some, some years left. So when I said inside photos, I think I'm... I meant like the model inside, uh, obviously, uh, yeah, a, a, an uh, architect there's studio. To take a picture of. But but it gives doesn't you, that look gorgeous? It gives you a pretty cool right. representation of what this thing. If is you have going a really like. small car, it's going to be so great. It's so great. Look, little little people talking. But uh, it's funny because I feel like when you look at the campus, sort of from above, when you see that you know it, you know it looks like a a ring from Tron. You think, gosh, it seems so flat. But then when you get up close, I mean, it's you know five stories high. That's yeah. actually a huge, huge campus. Right. It's just made to kind of blend in so much that you think, how are they going to fit all that Apple stuff in there? Uh, uh, I think that, uh, what did they say, 15,000 employees can fit in there? It's yes, gigantic. It's ginormous. 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 You've got hidden parking. This is, uh, you know, it's the Space Center. This was, in many ways, I think Steve Jobs' last it was. project. In he fact, did. remember when he got up in front of the Cupertino City Council, and, you know, he was obviously he was very pretty ill. Ill yeah. That was not long before he passed away. And, uh, you know, he's cracking jokes and, and, and everybody on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the board is, you know, very enamored of him. Of course, you so, saw that Samsung uh, is in, completely independently has created their own uh, campus. Uh, you can see it right here if you're curious. What do you uh, mean Brian. completely independently? Uh, they unveiled plans for a new campus. It's shaped like a figure eight. Oh, uh, gosh. And they say, we thought of this before Apple. Uh, no, this is a joke from the unofficial Apple weblog, but I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. In the Quest press release, Samsung was quick to point out it had plans for such a structure for years. Building materials would be held at customs. This is in no way a response to the recent announcements made by any other high-profile tech company named after a fruit. Um, <laughs> Campus 8. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Yeah. Good work. Not true, however. No. It's just a joke. Not true. Yeah. Uh, but the, the Apple, the circular campuses. It, that is true, happening. and I can't wait. I can't. I'm, the, the, I mean, it's. I don't care what company's in there. That's just cool looking. One they're going to have all these trees. They'll also have, that's where they'll be doing their announcements from now on. They mm -hmm. have a very large area designated just for doing the kinds of announcements they're going to be doing in uh, San exactly. Francisco to, uh, Tuesday. So we'll be going there soon. We got to, we will? I don't know. I would love to. I think it'll be a great red letter day when I go in with my walker 20 years from now. Oh. Finally, they let me back in. No, 20 years from now, we'll all be bionic. You'll, oh, be, you'll be in good shape. You'll be like a kangaroo just <laughs> jumping around. You'll be Point able to run down to Cupertino in like an hour. In. Bouncing in. Yeah. Hey, so we got a duh tip from Dwayne. Um, he says there's an iOS 7 feature that's very helpful. He says, in iOS 7, you can save credit card information to the Safari autofill settings. Right. In the, yeah, you knew about this. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought I was telling you something you didn't know. He says, in the settings app, go to Safari, and then to passwords and autofill. Should we do that now? Settings, blah, 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 Safari. Uh, the, Apple called this out, and they're going to, they're going to, what's going to be neat is this will, I think, passwords be part of the things fill. that are synced to your desktop when Mavericks, OS 10 Mavericks comes out. Yeah. So that now you'll have passports. I mean, passwords and uh, credit cards saved. It's basically adding one password or LastPass features uh, to the browser. I think that's really uh, fabulous. So I haven't added a credit card yet, but obviously all that information is, you know, it's pretty easy to do once you're, once you're, uh, uh, once you've got the information. And yeah. then it auto fills it when you're in the browser. Now I'm 
we, I'm going to presume Apple's done this securely, that they've encrypted it and all that sure. stuff. But I have to say, I still trust LastPass. That's what I use uh, for all of that. Mm -hmm. It's a little hard to use LastPass on a tablet. Um, but uh, Why? Because, because we've you talked about it before. You have to use the LastPass browser. Uh -huh. It's just weird. It's, okay. it's not exactly perfect. Um, cut and paste or whatever. Mm -hmm. So if it's built into Safari, you're surfing around with Safari, you just say, fill in the credit card information, and that's great. I love it. Yeah. And of course, if you're on a desktop, LastPass works the same way. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Dwayne. This is actually something that I guess I remember them talking about it in iOS 7, yeah. but I haven't taken advantage of it. And I know on the desktop they're storing it in Keychain, and I presume that what they've done is added a Keychain like component to exactly. iOS 7, which makes it very secure. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Uh, thank you, Dwayne, and everybody else who sent in duh tips. Um, we didn't have time for all of them, but Leo we'll save them up. Leo talks too much. Leo talks too much. So, should we take a break? I'm ready. Okay. I have my trusty clipboard. I'm just going to go ahead and just, I'm just going to, you know. Take a nap. I, well, I'm Relax. not going to take a nap. I'm going to listen to you, but I just want to be comfortable just while Just drowse. I, I think people find my voice soothing, and oftentimes. My brain is so big, sometimes I have to prop it up, you I know? agree. It's heavy. It's yeah. a, heavy is There's the head. There's just a lot, a lot of number crunching. And where's and, the crown? And genius ideas. I am excited about the holidays coming. I too. And a lot of people who sell stuff think this is, of course, this is the time of the year when you really can get going, you know. Absolutely. Black Friday's coming, Cyber Monday. Uh, maybe you are ready to think about selling online. Uh, if you don't have an online store, can I suggest Squarespace.com? You might not think of them immediately, but believe me, you should be. Squarespace, we've talked about it many times, great hosting solution, an all-in-one platform. They do your hosting. They do the content management system. They've got great templates, beautiful designs. Uh, when you create a website on Squarespace, it looks good no matter what size screen. They call it mobile responsive design. The design refills, reflows to fit anything from an iPhone to a giant monitor. Uh, and, of course, they're always improving their platform. New features, new designs, better support, even better support because they've won numerous awards for their uh, support. They just got a gold Stevie. Apparently, that's the big award for outstanding service. Squarespace.com. Well, they also have commerce. In fact, the Squarespace commerce will work with every single one of their templates. You can sell physical and digital items and an unlimited amount. They'll even help you with order management, tracking orders, customizable customer email updates. They'll help you print shipping labels and add coupons. They'll do tax calculations for you. And these stores are global all over the world, the U.S., the U.K., Canada, Australia, Belgium, France, Germany, Ireland, the Netherlands, Spain. This is really a great solution for somebody who has a product they want to sell online, physical or digital. I want you to try it out. It's easy to get started. Just click that Get Started button on any Squarespace page, squarespace.com. Select the template. You've got 20 great ones to choose from, but that's just the starting point. Once you pick a template, uh, you'll see what some people have done with it but as you scroll down. And then, you, to give you some ideas, there's somebody selling chess sets. And then uh, you can customize it to your heart's content it's with you know, your mouse dragging things around. You can add your own social networks, your own social media. Uh, every, look how gorgeous this is. Squarespace. It, it, I just love what they've done. I want you to try it out. Click the, get, click the Get Started button. You don't need to give them a credit card or really anything but your email address and the name of your new site. You've got two weeks to play with it. If afterwards you say, I'm ready, I want to buy, it starts at $8 a month. Commerce is just $24 a month for everything. They don't take a cut of your sales, so you keep all the money you make. Uh, it's just fabulous. You can have unlimited pages, unlimited uh, products to sell. You never get a bandwidth bill because your bandwidth's unlimited as well. And if you use our offer code iPad Today 10, that's iPad Today, all one word with the number 10 tagged on there, you'll get 10% off. Show your support for iPad Today and get a great site going, squarespace.com. Please, when you do buy iPad Today 10 to get 10% off your first order on new accounts. Thank you, Squarespace. Thanks, we Squarespace. So I we talked about iPadography. Yeah, that was hard to say. Yeah. Ipadography. Threw threw you a little bit of a Ipadography. I well, you're you're making it sound like podiatrist. Ipodiatrist. Ipadography. Ipadography. Right. Ipadography. That would be photography with an iPad. Yeah, that's exactly right. Iphoneography is actually a term that people 
use. Actually, I know that one. Yeah. I just hadn't heard iPadography. Well, Although, you know, as I idea. mentioned last week, everywhere I traveled all around the world, everywhere you'd see tourists with their iPads. It's, it, it's just not going <laughs> away. We actually, Taking pictures. We actually got a great email from Craig Nansen, who's the director of technology at Minot. I hope that's how you say it, public schools in Minot, North Dakota. Minot. Minot. In Minot, North Dakota. And he says, during your latest show, you got into a discussion about people using the iPad for taking photos. Yep. Uh, Craig links us to a blog post that he wrote about a professional photographer. They did a photo walk recently who spent a day with a bunch of folks at a tech conference. And he all he uses is his iPad. Wow. And yeah, so Craig put together just a great kind of like, hey, we did this photo walk. We took a bunch of pictures. Here were some of the tricks that um, that we learned about using, you know, something like uh, yeah, a, a particular kind of tripod. See, these are good, but I think they would be better with a real camera. Well, but let's say that uh, the iPad is what you've got. On right, it. that's true. If you're committed to using the iPad... But that's going a little far. <laughs> then there are a variety of things that you can do in order to <laughs> that's make... because he doesn't have Zoom, so he has to put the iPad on a tripod and bring it up to the... But but hey, How Zoom, is he taking Zoom the picture? would not recreate that. No, you're right. It's up there. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. So what's neat too about, yeah, so all of these photos. It just, yeah, it some just, way of pushing that shutter button, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like some sort of a, a external shutter. Yeah. But if you scroll down a little bit, Brian, we've got a bunch of pictures, but they've also got, Craig has uh, listed a variety of apps. Some of them we've talked about on the show. Many Some of them are new. I haven't seen we have Pure not. Shot. That's new. In fact, Eye that water. is where I got my Lens Flare app that we talked about earlier in the show. Uh, Got to give credit where credit's due. Crop so Suey. I, don't you love that? that? Yeah. yeah. So some of these, some of these I've heard of, but 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 most actually we've not covered. So I thought anybody who's interested in Look at all taking this. iPadography to the next level, this is a great great resource for you, and we will have this uh, blog post in our show notes. Well, we'll link to it in our show notes, um, and then you can kind of go nuts. And Craig's uh, done a really good job of telling you, you know, how much everything costs and and where it comes from and all that stuff. So neat. Very neat. Yeah. And, you know, we're not going to talk about all the apps today, but I'm definitely going to use that as a resource. My app cap is related. Shows. Stay tuned. Oh, good. Yeah. You've been all about the photography pho photography manipulation stuff. I'm excited. We got quite a few uh, emails, by the way, of how everybody liked how you melted me <laughs> last week. I could do more of that if you want. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, the whole thing is That's a, little, a fun, that was a, a fun troubling. program. Yeah. Got another email from... Somebody who calls him or herself the brain in mm. Los Angeles says, I installed the Flickr app to my iPad mini mm -hmm. on iOS 6. I uploaded all my photos on my iPad over 2,000. To my dismay, people started liking and commenting on my photos. I thought default was supposed to be set to private. <gasps> Arr, Arr. Yeah. I went to Flickr.com. I set all my settings to private, did the same on the app, resumed uploads. Photos were still going public. Well, that's weird. I spent several hours going through, deleting the photos manually one at a time since there's no book delete. They say, thanks, love the show normally. Um, so this is a problem with the Flickr app? Let's think about what's going on here. First of all... Uh, does the fact that you're on iOS 6 have anything to do with this? Because I thought that Auto Sync on the Flickr app was new in iOS 7, but let's take a look. Because I don't want to... No, no, I don't think that's true. I, no, yeah. I, I don't mean. think that's true. I think that, yes, yeah, see, auto upload, new, off, automatically upload pictures. These photos are private until you share them. It says very clearly. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's happening here. Um, you can change your preferences and settings, but uh, you know I've just turned on auto upload. So now when I take a picture with my pad, it will be automatically uploaded to Flickr. Uh, and it's supposedly private, so I, I, you know. Yeah, see, look at this. If you look at my Flickr app, the last photo that I uploaded publicly was... Uh, These are all private photos we're looking at right now. Well, they yeah, were. but I don't have very good private photos. So, yeah, this is all stuff that, you know, Instagram, Instagram. Huh. All right, so right about this point, like, I've sent that photo to a friend. That's on, that was on my phone. I wouldn't expect that to be public. In fact, I'm shocked that you're showing Don't it Don't you right love now. that? 
I mean, come on, Leo. I look I pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that You're was, hot. I don't know. I was, that's hot. That's, come on. Hot. Sometimes you just send You're silly hot. pictures and you send pictures of yourself. But anyway, all of these, so you go back to the tongue picture. Yeah, that's private. And you see a little lock thing. Yeah. So uh, the brain, I don't know what's up with your Flickr app. Is it possible that, you know, you're, you're running an older version of the app and it needs to be updated? So. I don't know. Yeah, all the stuff uh, is, yeah, this is all stuff that I, I didn't upload anywhere. I certainly, it sounds like he has checked his settings on Flickr. Uh, you know, obviously. I don't know. Uh, I, I, you're the first I've heard of this happening. Flickr says they're private, as they've been private for Sarah. As far as I can tell, they've been private. I don't right. think. Right, yeah. And also, I mean, it, it's, it's the, this is the sort of thing that happens in the background. So as Scooter X points out in chat, this applies to photos that are taken after you say, yes, turn on auto-upload. Right. You know, if you're going back in time, selecting a bunch of photos and then uploading them and thinking that Flickr will put them into some sort of private album, that's not necessarily the case. So make sure you understand what's going on there. Right. And if you post to Flickr using this app, which is different than the auto upload, correct? Then it will take the settings that you've even given, either given it during posting or that you have on your profile, the right. default settings. You may not. I would absolutely make sure that your profile is not set to default be public. And you, what you think is public, may be something different. Maybe, you know, I mean, maybe you're, maybe you have it set to only friends, only people I've friended, my contacts, because you yeah. know Flickr has contacts, right. Can see it. Maybe that's who's seeing it. I, I, I think it's a uh, user error. I think it has to be. Yeah, if you're posting to Flickr, better make sure that you're posting to some sort of a private album. Right. Um, that's that's which you are by default if you use the auto upload feature of the Flickr app. Yeah, yeah, but if you're like selecting a bunch of photos and saying upload, it's going right. to be private. It's, it's, right. It doesn't work that way. The whole point of auto upload is that you don't actually have to upload anything. It's just happening, as as mine were. Glenn has a bone to pick with iOS seven. Uh, we're still definitely getting uh, things. Uh, coming in from all of our viewers and listeners who just stuff happening on iOS 7 that you just don't get. Glenn says, a lot of discussion about iOS 7 micro issues, but I haven't heard one person ask why there's no kill all button to shut down all running apps at once. He says, doesn't seem to be an issue with Android, but with iOS 7, it either must not be possible. There, there's no kill all button on Android either. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. He says, uh, it either must not be possible, or they'd have it, or the brilliant genius design team at Apple thinks that swiping up the screen 22 times to shut down each app is somehow good design. No, I think they think there's no need for a kill all because... Uh, they're not really running. Yeah, they're not really running. I think that that is not a real problem. There, I mean, Apple has this, you know, for instance, uh, in, in messages, um, there's no delete all to kill all the messages. Mm -hmm. And that's always bugged me in the, in, in the phone, too. You have to go one by one and delete them all. Um, but this is a little different. There's, those are not actually running. They're, 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 what happens is the operating system, iOS 6 did this, too. iOS 7 does it even better. Once an app has been run... We'll put the app in kind of a hibernate state when it's not f on the screen. The app can run a little bit in the background. There's some simple background uh, multitasking. For the most part, it's just hibernating. And after a while, if the app isn't run, it'll just put it to sleep. It'll say, you know, you're done. It'll clear out the memory. Mm -hmm. uh, it leaves a thumbnail there so you can quickly jump back to it. Yeah. But it's not really running. And so I don't really think running. it's not, you don't, uh, Android doesn't need a task manager and they strongly discourage task managers as well. This is not something that you generally need to do on mobile. So I think that there's no reason for it. Yeah, I think that there's, well, there's something about, I think, um, people like the idea of, you know, double tapping and then being able to just clean it up. Right. Because you want to sort of start over rather than having well, this whole queue of and, things. And, Not so much about like a memory drain. And, and we did show you. I mean, there's a fast way. You can use as many as, as fingers as you want. <laughs> So you can, you know, you can get rid of m multiple ones. If you could get three fingers doing yeah. it, you can, well, I guess I can't regret it. Think, I think, you know, I, I kind of get what you're talking about. It's like, Glenn doesn't really need to. This the, is not the necessary. Purposes, but, but it's a little bit like saying, uh, well, why not just give either. us a feature to close all tabs? You know, the Yeah, but tabs these aren't, aren't that's really the, I think that's what I'm saying is these are not tabs. These, these don't, these are not running things. In fact, by now, I've gone way back in time. I mean, I haven't run this in ages. It's still there, but these aren't things that I've run in ages, right? I haven't looked at the NFL mobile app since before I left. So this is these are months ago, these things. Oh. And by the way, did you notice how long it took? Because it was relaunching it, mm -hmm. right? It wasn't in yeah. the background sitting right. there in memory. It would yeah. have to relaunch it. 
Well, yeah, you, you have more issues with uh, with push notifications and, and stuff that's pulling data in the background than you do about apps that are running. But Glenn, I feel like I understand it would be nice to just have the option. It's really a history of your app. Somebody said that in the chat room. I think yeah. that's a good way to think of it. Yeah. Not a multitask. But it could be, yeah. Well, then you get into a history conversation. Maybe somebody's borrowing your iPad and you don't want them to know what apps you've uh, had open in the last three months. Well, you could turn it off and on again. Wouldn't that work? Yes. Does the restart show the same background apps? That's a good question. I think it... Somebody said it does. I think it does, How yeah. How interesting. Yeah, well, maybe I Apple just, should I have a kill all. But I you know, you live in the Apple world, you, you get what you get. You get what you get. You, you get, better Apple like it, does darn it. The They're Apple building way. a space yeah. center. <laughs> hey, so we've got a song today, Leo. This is pretty exciting. Uh, Barry sent this to us uh, in the middle of the night, actually. Although maybe Barry you live in Australia or something, so maybe it was perfectly. Or normal maybe he time stayed up late recording. As maybe many, he stayed up late recording. Many artists do. That could be a possibility as well. I was just like very excited at four in the morning to get a song from Barry. Uh, he says that he wrote, uh, he, he composed this entirely on a first-gen iPad, which admittedly it can be somewhat limited. Um, he said he bought it. F pretty much for an app called On Song that I've never heard of or used. And um, he, he w w well, we should just play it. It's very good. love iPads. They both host iPad today. That's us, baby. And Leo and Sarah love app caps. Oh, yeah. Cause they end each show that way mm. They wear funny hats <laughs> To give us their final say Well Sarah's obsessed with her feline She is indeed, this guy watches Cat gets new pictures each day mm -hmm. And Leo loves Forge and his Mustang <laughs> And gadgets galore every way They're quite the pair Oh yeah, baby the hosts of iPad today. I love it. This is the cutest thing ever. That's marvelous. Where do they get those hats? Oh yeah. Those crazy app cap cats. <laughs> For every iPad today. Cause they end every show that way. Leo and Sarah love iPads. <laughs> That's why they're iPad today. <laughs> That's love good. you, well, Barry. Who is that? Barry? Yes. He's good. I love him. Isn't he good? And he wrote this long email and he's like, you know, I know it's not very good, it's not very polished. And so I was like, I, you know, click and link like, oh, this is gonna suck. And it was so good. It's pretty darn good to me. Barry, you're a natural. You're the next buble. Did you just call him a name? <laughs> Michael Buble. Oh, Michael Buble. You know, that guy. Mm -hmm. Better than So Buble. get that app cap ready. Oh, okay. Because we are going to do our app caps in just That's a bit. That's correct. But first, a word from 99 Designs. Not everybody's got the talent of a Barry Buble. Some people, they uh, maybe they're programmers, or perhaps they're chefs. Maybe they're just personalities, and they don't have the graphics talent, the skill to do a Facebook landing page or a menu for their restaurant or that cool app design. That's why we got 99 Designs. It brings people who have skills in one area together with great designers so everything in the world can look good. You get everything from a t-shirt design. We've done that several times now on 99 Designs to mobile app design. It's kind of cool. More than a quarter million designers are waiting for you to set up a contest on 99designs.com. When you do, they'll take a look at it. They'll say, oh, I got an idea. And uh, they'll give you some specs, some ideas, some thoughts. You can work back and forth. Pick the designer you like. You pay them the pre-negotiated rate, and you're getting some great designs. 99 designs seeking to beautify the world. One app, one menu, one landing page, one website at a time. And I want you to take a look at it. Visit 99designs.com. These are all mobile app designs. It starts at 499 
But you can set your own price, of course. Look at that, iOS redesign for a remote desktop. So they want it to look good. $4.99, they got 34 designs from three designers. Look at that. Now, here's the deal. If you go to 99designs.com slash iPad today right now and get a $99 power pack of services, absolutely free. The power pack gives you more designer time, more attention. They'll bold highlight and feature your design in the 99designs marketplace. You'll get nearly twice as many submissions. We love designers. I envy designers. I wish I had that skill, that style, that savoir faire. I do not. That's why I honor the designers. I, I think either. it's so great. And, and you know, Sarah and I, we, we obviously not we don't have that kind of talent, but no. we might have talent in other realms. Well, 99designs.com <laughs> slash iPad today. Get that power pack for free worth 99 bucks. Hey, thank you, 99designs. For giving us some great designs and supporting uh, our show. We appreciate it. We wear our app caps for one reason only. To wear hats. To wear hats. Well, there's two reasons. Uh, to wear hats, but also to make, to make choosing a standout app of the week a festive affair. When we first started this, didn't we both wear the same hat? Wasn't that the idea? Well, but we had the Twit Fez. We wear caps. the Fez, so it was like the the honoring the Twit Fez honors. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. But I then think it more. I think the show started before we got the Fezes. Oh. Fez I. Fezes. 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 Uh, and it just turned. It, I know why it started because I said, Leo, you sure do have a lot of hats. Maybe we should make that part of the show. And you were like, That's dumb. Okay. <laughs> and so here we are. I love it because, and by the way, yeah. my wall now has. This I have hat more makes hats. Me look like I sort of have like. Well, you know what that is. My head got shaved down. That's a, bit. a pork pie hat. That's a Walter White hat. That's in honor of Breaking Bad. Yeah, man. And that's why I ordered that hat. Sup. 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 It doesn't. It just, here, it makes my, let me just it show makes you. My head look it looks weird. better on you than me. Watch. Well, I don't the know. The problem is some people can wear pork pie hats and some people can't. <laughs> I can't. I don't think that looks good on me. It looks. It, it looked good on Walter White. Well. It looks better on you, is what I'm saying. It looks no, better I on you. I feel like it makes it look like my the top of my head has been shaved off, kind of Kill Bill style. Oh, no, you're wearing a hat. Well, but it's kind of I don't know. Uh, whatever. It's, it's just, not. Maybe it's not for you. This, on the other hand, this is a, this hat fits me. You look like you need to go into the outback, <laughs> no. and I don't know, study some rocks or something like that. I like maybe it. a jungle swamp when so, you're done. <clears throat> Let's uh, let's do an app cap. You All got right. you said you got one that. Uh, tell me about this now. This le, vamp. Le, le vamp. Le vamp. Le vamp. L e le. Yeah. Vamp. It's a little French little vampire vampire bat, Aww. and he's kind of cute. But he you know he needs to you know he's a vampire right? So he eats Aww. living things. Um, and there are a bunch of people who are like, hey, vampire, you suck. We want you destroyed. Aww. But you're on the side of the cool, cute little French vampire. So uh, go ahead and touch to play. So Would kid, here, Oh, this looks good. Would kids like this? Uh, or is it more, is it adult and kids? Um, Sit I, back, Heisenberg. Oh, you're sorry, in the way. sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Um, I think that, I mean, it certainly looks like a kid game. Uh, let's see. Put it down like this. We want you to. Oh, yeah. Pig. This is. I could see kids would love this. Kids would love this. And I don't think, even though obviously he's eating pigs, it's anything that's too, like, upsetting. No. Ooh, well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. This oh, guy goes shoot. up. I said, I played And those this people a are chasing bit. him? Yeah, because they're like, get the vampire. You know, so the so you, you can lose by letting them catch you. Exactly. But, you know, why would you want right. to do that? And but if in, or by getting eaten by something that you should be eating, obviously. Well, you're. You oh, eat they're the catching pigs. up. But so this is there's... kind of like this is. Oh shoot! And there's a smelly pig. Hi. That you it's want like to stay One of those away running from. games. Yeah. Wow. Ah! Well, but it's a side scroller. You're getting scroller. close to me. So if you keep eating stuff, then you get stronger and, and you, you run along. faster. Got yeah, it. and there's there's stuff that you're trying to get rid of uh, that's in your way. Yeah. Fun. And it's cute. I really actually it's really like cute. it a lot. It's a cute ah, ah, oh, that slowed him down, oh see? Ah. That's slowing him down. Ah. Eat a pig. Smoosh a pumpkin. You gotta get, do better getting over those rivers. Ah. They slow you down. Ah. Oh, it's stinky. Ah. Oh. oh, stinky ah. pigs are bad. Look at that. And he's so So cute. you jump over a stinky pig. Yeah. Well, no, you roll them out of the way. Oh, you roll them out of the way. See, this is, again, you know me. I get very stressed out about games. 
Yeah, but you like low stress games. I like low stress games that are more of a thinking man's yeah. game. But I like the little, uh, the, this, get that pig. Yeah, there you go. Oh, shoot. Um, but I, I just like his little face. He's just a cute little vampy. Hey. Hey, block some beans to shade Levant from the. Oh, yeah, oh. light's bad. Oh, so you're learning some skills cool. here. Oh, get Francis. No, I don't want to do that. Oh, ah! Oh, so they this caught is, me. Uh, they killed all right. me. Fiend. All right. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I really like it, actually. I, I, for that. some reason, even though I find it stressful, it's cute enough that I'm like, I, I like this. You, you know, you add a little French spin on something, and I'm going to talk about it. So this is a uh, completely, no, it's not uh, completely free app. It's from highvoltage.com. It's 99 cents. It's kind of funny because you're wearing a pork pie hat, and he's eating pigs. Is it? Mm -hmm. Funny? Funny. Funny ha-ha uh -huh, or funny weird? All right, I want to do my app cap. All right, do it. Mm -hmm. Fine, mm -hmm. do it. So I've noticed lately a lot of cameras have been shipping with Wi-Fi. Uh, built in. In fact, Sony just announced a new, the new A7 and A7R cameras with built-in Wi-Fi. And this is a camera that uh, Rob Reed was raving about on uh, Twit. Oh, yeah? This is the Sony RX100. I'm going to review it this week on Before You this Buy. Is a mirrorless camera? It's, uh, well, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a compact camera. I mean, uh -huh. it's, there's, it's very small. Yeah, you can't remove the lens or anything like that. Um, but what you can do with it, which is kind of interesting, is install software on your iPhone or your iPad to control it because it has Wi-Fi built in. So let me show you uh, how this works. First, I'm going to go to the menu on this camera, and I'm going to set it up so that it's being controlled by the smartphone. There's two ways you can use the smartphone with this camera. One is to turn on the Wi-Fi and say, run the app that comes, hold on a second, I'm going to log in here, that comes uh, from Sony to do this. So let me, that's a free app, by the way called Play Memories Mobile, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, oh, actually, before I run the app, I have to go on my Wi-Fi and find the camera. So it gives you a little password. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna, the camera, it's kind of like a GoPro does this too. Uh, in a second, it's gonna see the camera. There, do, do, do. Where is the camera? Uh, I don't see the camera. Where's the camera? Because basically the camera becomes a Wi-Fi access point. Yeah, which is uh, very, very helpful. Uh, come on, camera. Well, now this this isn't. It's not seeing it. Let me do that again. Maybe it. Maybe it's just uh, worked really good earlier. I think that might be it. Two gigahertz. No, 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 no. That's side. You know, we have too many Wi-Fi signals in here, including FBI surveillance van. Yeah, I don't know what that. Yeah. Who is that? I, we don't know. We've oh. not been there. It is. There's there you the go. camera. There you All go. Right. I just took a second. So and it has a password. So it's it's password protected. So now I, it says can. Controlling with smartphone, you cannot directly operate this device. So I'm going to put this device, this camera, somewhere. Down next And to I'm going to launch the app, and you're going to see what the camera is seeing what? via Wi-Fi. And you can control the camera. So Ooh. that's one of two ways you could do this. The other way you could do it, and it has a little NFC on the side. See right here? You can, <laughs> isn't that cool? So the other way you could do this is uh, to take pictures with the camera and then just send them to the iPhone or the iPad. Sure, yeah. Or the Android device. But right now, uh, I'm going to put the camera... you yourself a crazy big viewfinder. Right here, yeah, a crazy big viewfinder. I can zoom, I can press telephoto and zoom in on you. Ooh, let's yeah. see it. Oh, I can zoom, zoom out. Uh, I could take the picture. There you go, I just oh, took your picture. Awesome. Yeah, that's a nice picture. That is not a nice picture. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Now it resizes it for transfer because these are pretty big, uh, uh, I think they're 22 megapixel uh, images. But I can now share this no, or I can save dare. it. I can save it to my uh, camera roll and use all those great things that we like to edit it. I can actually send it directly to Instagram or Evernote or Path or whatever. Here, let's do that. I think this if is If you do good. that, I will murder yeah. you. No, I'm going to put this on Path right now. I will put you in a dungeon yeah, and really? I will forget I mean, to I, feed you. Really? Yes. You don't like that picture? Not really. What? You is are. You know what? Fine. My I don't even care. Name. Don't. Oh, oh, that's really great. I'm yeah. with. You, saw, you said, Sarah. what is my name, by the way? Well, Nam. it's uh, damn you autocorrect. Uh-huh. Sarah that's, Lane, you know that's what? your name, isn't this it? Is, this, is, uh, this is whole, like, look at me. I've got power of live I television guy going brick. on right now. She really is upset, I just she? want to humiliate. I, apparently, I, mean, I don't exist. I'm, on, I'm off the grid. You're off. Oh, you know why? Why? 
because my Wi-Fi, I just took oh. over the Wi-Fi with the camera. Oh, yeah. So you're in luck. I can't right now send that out. Oh, man. Wah, wah, wah. But later I will. So uh, so this does a couple of things. It allows you to, say, put the camera somewhere and control it uh, via Wi-Fi, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, it also allows you to take pictures on the camera and send them to your device. So, it, you know, all those people who are using the iPad to take pictures, now they could take pictures with a Wi-Fi-enabled point-and-shoot and then send them to the iPad for later editing or, or sharing or that kind of thing. Very which is, cool. Which is kind of cool. So now, of course, this requires, in this case, a Sony camera. Other cameras have these capabilities as well. But this is the Sony software is called Play Memory, uh, and it is for uh, the Sony camera there. I just took up another picture. That's, that's a good picture of you. That's a good picture. Whatever. Yeah. And then there's another mode where you can take pictures with the camera and just uh, pick. I could say, take 20 pictures and go send that one, that one, that one, and that one to my iPad for later editing. Yeah. No more camera connection kit. Isn't that cool? Uh, very cool. Now, this is not an inexpensive camera, and other companies are doing this, so I'm not sure. I mean, this camera is 700 bucks. It's a point-and-shoot, so that's kind of pricey for a point-and-shoot. That's the RX100 uh, Mark II from Sony. Um, I love the camera. It has a, a very low light performance. Uh, that's one of the reasons I got it. Rob Reed took pictures at a Rolling Stone concert. Because, you know, concerts, you can't get a big camera into you. But this is like, oh, that's a dumb little camera. You could take that in. We're not, you're not going to cause a... But then it looks really nice. The pictures are, like, really professional. Looking. Excellent. So there you go. That is the Sony RX100 Mark II camera and the accompanying software, which is free to uh, copy stuff over to the iPad, Play Memories Mobile. But I think more and more cameras coming out with this capability. And I, by movies works too, by the way. The videos work too. Oh, nice. So I think it's pretty cool. And, and uh, I tell you, now, now you're not tied to this, you know, iPad camera. You can use a really good camera and get your images directly onto the iPad. That's a great one. Very good AppCap. AppCap Plus. It's interesting. Today. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, when you said we we're going to do images, I thought, well, this would be a good one to show. I think so. Yeah. No, it all it all mm -hmm. comes back around. Our show is very circular, like it's a great Apple's camera. new headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's it. <laughs> We've come to the end of our show. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. Remember that... Until the end of the year, you can enjoy us live on Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Leo will be taking a lot of photos with the Sony camera mm. starting today for all eternity. I you wish I'd had this on my last trip. This is such a good camera. Yeah, I know. You missed it by like two weeks. Yeah. That's, a, that's kind of a cool little shutter thing, too. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you next time on iPad Today. Oh, oh smile. I oh, got yeah. <laughs>